31 year old Sarah Jane Cavanaugh wanted people to believe she was a decorated war hero. She created fake accounts and crafted an elaborate backstory about how she was a brave Marine who contracted cancer from exposure to burn pits in Iraq and Afghanistan. She used this narrative to convince generous folks to send her money for her supposed healthcare expenses. The only problem is that it was all based on a lie. Brave men and women in the U.S. military are granted honors and medals to commemorate their courage or sacrifice on the battlefield. According to Kavanaugh, she received two of the most prestigious medals given to service members, the Purple Heart and Bronze Star. The Purple Heart is the military's oldest honor, reserved for only the worthiest recipients. It's granted to individuals who were either wounded or killed during active duty, symbolizing the sacrifice of servicemen and women. It was first established in 1782, and more than 2 million have been distributed in the 240 years since. The Bronze Star was first established in 1944. This medal is given to individuals who demonstrated heroism during a military operation against enemy forces. The V displayed by those who wear the Bronze Star stands for Valor, which all recipients are deemed to possess. Of course, not everyone who claims to have received these medals demonstrates such honorable qualities. That brings us back to Kavanaugh. As part of her effort to fleece well-meaning individuals, Kavanaugh claimed that she developed stage 4 lung cancer after inhaling chemicals emitted by burn pits during her service in the Middle East. Many veterans, particularly those who served during the Afghanistan war, have suffered severe health consequences from such burn pits. They were initially set up on bases across the region to dispose of various materials. While fire Fire can be an effective way to get rid of the trash, it also produces smoke and fumes detrimental to the health of those nearby. As a result of those burn pits, the military estimates that 3.5 million American service members were exposed to potentially harmful emissions. Kavanaugh was not one of those people, but that didn't stop her from claiming that she was. According to prosecutors, she scammed generous supporters and advocacy groups out of about $250,000. Authorities say she petitioned several leading military organizations, including the Code of Support Foundation, for donations to her cause. That group provided her with roughly $18,000, which she used to repair the furnace in her home and pay for a membership at a health club, among other things. She reportedly brought in more than $200,000 from the Wounded Warrior Project, which collected the funds to help her with her grocery bills and the cost of physical therapy. Creative Vets, a group dedicated to providing art therapy to veterans, spent more than $16,000 on Kavanaugh's behalf. A source from within the organization said the benefits included tuition and travel, among other expenses. Her online fundraiser netted an additional $4,700 in donations. As one of those donors later acknowledged, Kavanaugh's story was so convincing that it couldn't be a lie. It was impossible. Kate Mannion hosted a military-themed podcast and used her position to call on others to donate money. In a subsequent article, Mannion wrote that she was so wrapped up in the story that she suspended disbelief and did not research the claims. Upon closer inspection, however, she noted that Kavanaugh wore her medals differently than actual Marines would. However, when faced with the prospect of helping a dying veteran, the host said that she didn't even look closely at any of that stuff, because she never imagined that anyone would make up such a story just to make a few bucks. Marine Major Thomas Schumann, who started the veterans group Patrol Base Abate, said Kavanaugh reached out to him and presented fake documents to back up her cancer claims. He met with her to discuss her situation and confirmed that she had created a fundraising account and repeated the same claims about her military history and illness. She recounted the supposed injuries she received in Afghanistan and lengthy recovery at medical facilities in Germany and the United States. She even told Schumann she had two years left to live. To maintain a lie like this one, Kavanaugh had to provide some evidence to back up her claims. She used her job at the Veterans Administration and her knack for weaving complicated lies to accomplish her shady goal. She was working at a VA medical center in Rhode Island when she got her hands on a discharge certificate for a Marine named Patrick Herney. Prosecutors say she forged that document to say she served in the Marines between 2009 and 2016. She altered the paperwork to indicate that she achieved the rank of corporal. She also replaced Perny's birthday and social security number with her own. Certain other identifying information, including a military ID number, were left untouched. As for the medals, Kavanaugh bought them from a military supplier in California. She put on a convincing act, including a speech she delivered in August 2021 at the Purple Heart Trail in her home state. Clad in a uniform adorned by the Purple Heart Medal, she reflected on living life in a war zone. Addressing a crowd of veterans, she recited a poem she wrote about those who are unsure of how to exist 
in the world after leaving the military. Insisting that she could relate to that sentiment, she described herself as one of those veterans who wished to fly under the radar, who merely did what was asked when it was asked. After sharing her poem, Kavanaugh went on to share her supposed motivation. She described a fellow Marine who was injured during their service in Afghanistan. Upon being discharged and returning to the United States, she claimed that the individual took their own life. She also referenced the 11 other Marines who received a Purple Heart along with her, adding that some came home, some did not, but no one came home the same. As with any complex scheme, Kavanaugh's House of Cards came toppling down. In early 2022, authorities looked into claims that she was falsifying information to prepare a scam. In addition to forging military documents, prosecutors say she also created fraudulent medical paperwork to reflect her fake lung cancer. Reports indicate that she even reached out to a veterans health advocacy group for assistance. However, staff at the Hunter 7 Foundation reached a dead end when they tried to verify Kavanaugh's marine background. As the allegations against her piled up, she caved under pressure to resign as the commander of the veterans of foreign wars in Rhode Island. At that point, her problems were only getting worse. A criminal complaint laid out the case against Kavanaugh, revealing a complex scheme meant to deceive and defraud organizations committed to helping actual veterans dealing with a range of serious issues. Prosecutors say she leveraged her ties to the VA to obtain a uniform and the prestigious medals. She was also accused of retrieving the documents necessary to forge evidence that she was being treated for lung cancer at the Dana-Farber Institute in Boston. After using an actual patient's identification and records, she allegedly submitted the documentation to Hunter 7 and claimed that she needed help paying her bills while battling the potentially deadly disease. A Marine, who served around the same time as Kavanaugh, brought the matter to the attention of the Hunter 7 Foundation. She would have known about Kavanaugh if she was as decorated as she claims. The administrators and members of a Facebook group dedicated to female Marines investigated the authenticity of the documents. Several people determined there was something fishy going on with the information. When officials got suspicious, they looked more closely at Kavanaugh's documentation, particularly the military ID number. Their research revealed the ID linked back to Herney, the actual Marine who served between 2011 and 2016 before taking on a civilian role with the Navy. He was able to add more context to the investigation by confirming that he had been treated at the VA hospital while Kavanaugh worked there. However, he didn't know who she was nor how she got her hands on his information. Prosecutors say the ID number was left untouched, but she altered the social security number on the forged documents. One glaring issue with her papers was that a release form signed in 2015 listed her discharge date as 2016. She identified herself as a Marine security guard on the same document, though there was no evidence that she had completed the necessary training. Even as she faced increasing heat from military groups, donors, and authorities. She maintained her innocence. She even agreed to an interview with the military news outlet Task and Purpose, during which she asserted that she didn't tell the Hunter 7 Foundation that she was a Marine veteran dying of cancer. Furthermore, she claimed that the organization contacted her initially, and she didn't send representatives any documentation painting her as an injured veteran. She says they wanted to know her story. She described the interactions as indirect, third-person referrals, and claimed that she had no idea the group planned to conduct a fundraiser to benefit her. As for the money collected on her behalf, Kavanaugh insisted that she wouldn't claim any donations from any charities. Attempting to distance herself from the allegations, she denied having any ties to the VFW in Rhode Island. She also evaded questions about whether she'd been installed as the commander of that post. VFW officials acknowledged that she'd been the post's commander before her resignation amid the growing scandal. Issuing public denials and stepping down from her post wasn't enough to keep prosecutors from pursuing her. U.S. Attorney Zachary A. Kuna said Kavanaugh's fraud was $241,000, which came from various organizations and individual contributors who found her GoFundMe page. The Hunter 7 Foundation confirmed that it had refunded any donations given to Kavanaugh. According to the group's executive director, the entire ordeal cost them more than just money. Chelsea Simone explained that Kavanaugh presented a heart-wrenching story that hijacked compassion. Everyone fell for her lies and gave her resources that could have gone somewhere else. As of the latest updates available, there's no reliable information confirming that she never enlisted in the Marines or any other military branch. She was arrested on suspicion of multiple crimes, including forging a military discharge, fraud, and aggravated identity theft. 
If convicted, she could spend 25 years behind bars. Following her arrest, she was released after posting a $50,000 bond. Several prominent cases of stolen valor or fraudulently portraying oneself as a military hero have made the news in recent years. When combined with a fake illness and an effort to fleece well-meaning people out of their money, Kavanaugh's case is even more outrageous than most. Seeing how she faces more than two decades in prison, it's clear that prosecutors and military officials treat crimes like hers very seriously. Click here to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comments section what you think is worse, lying about cancer or lying about military service.